We're going to take a look at creating a glass photosphere, but before you start, create a folder on your hard drive and put around about 25, 30 images into that folder. Then, once you've done that, come up to File, drop down to Contact Sheet 2, clicking on Contact Sheet 2, which opens this dialog box. Image Source, Use Folder, Choose. This is where you navigate to the folder that you just created, containing those 25 to 30 images so click choose on this these are the ones I've selected they're in with my July assignment so if we come onto this we're going to click on it and I'm going to click choose there they are you'll notice it's showing a path at the top there with July assignment if we just drop down you'll notice you've got the document size it's in inches you can of course have centimeters or pixels it's 8 inches by 10 inches I'm going to change this to 8 inches so it's square you'll notice where a little preview on the side here changes resolution 300 now the important thing is make sure you untick this so untick flatten all layers that is important make sure this is unticked dropping down place across and we're going to untick this as well you'll notice every time we're sort of unticking a box this little preview is changing coming through we're going to swipe over this and we're going to take out any dimensions that are in here. So if it's showing in centimeters, pixels, just make sure you remove this and that will really help. Got the columns, the rows, we've got sort of five and six there. I'm going to leave that as it is, but we are going to untick rotate for best fit. And guess what? We're going to untick use file and caption names as well. Once you've done that, click OK and be prepared for some flashing images because off they go. Racing through there, you'll notice it's going through some various stages. Once it's finished, you'll have the contact sheet and you'll also have all the sort of images showing here in layers as well, which is just what we want because we want to sort of reorganize things. Now, to help us reorganize, we're going to pick up the move tool. Use the one with the auto select. So this is when you can use the auto select and it really does help. Now, the other thing we want to do is just sort of reorganize things. You notice that we've got some images here lined up in the same sort of themes. We're going to move these around. But make sure as well that you put perhaps the more colorful ones to the center because then when we come to the glass sphere, it will really help. Just coming to this one. I want to leave this one here in the top corner as well. You'll notice we got white space. Now we need to fill in all this white space. But what you can do is because we've got so much white space we need to sort of be able to come in and duplicate some images a quick and easy way with the move tool just make sure we're working on this layer so just click down now press alt or option look at the way the cursor changes you get a double arrow clicking down we've now got a double image we've duplicated that layer we can drop that down into position okay let's move some of these around I'm just going to drop this one down here let's take that one up into that position like this let's move that down I'm just going to go and I'm just going to rearrange some of these and we're going to use that method of using the alter option just to duplicate them so we can move them around quickly and easily like this moving that one down there I'm going to fill in all the white space once I'm done I'll get back to you and we'll continue with the rest of the effect I have finished moving them all around they're all in position so now for the next stage. The next stage is, of course, creating that glass sphere. The first thing we need to do is we need to come up to layer. We're going to drop these layers down into one layer. And we can do that by simply clicking on flatten image. Look what happens. We've now got one layer. Coming across to the toolbox, we're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool. So just make sure you've got the elliptical marquee tool and also make sure you've got the new selection. That's the first little icon in. Click on that. Right. Once you've done that, come into the image. Now hold down shift. The reason for holding down shift is with when you hold down shift, you get a perfectly spherical, a perfectly round selection. Bringing this out into that sort of area there would be pretty good. And because we've got that new selection, you get a little rectangle with a flag on the top, which means you can actually move our selection around, which is pretty handy. Something like that there would do great stuff. Right, that'll do nicely. We're now going to copy what's inside this selection and we're going to paste it into a new layer to do that is very simple you just use command J control J that's command J or control J in it goes if I just switch it off we can take a look there it is so far we now need to protect our sphere our circle 
Now to do this, if we come up to the Layers panel here, come to the thumbnail, now press Command or Control. Pressing Command or Control, you see we get a square on the back of our cursor. Click down. We have now got ourselves a selection. This is just making sure that we're going to hold everything inside that selection. Because come into Filter, come into Distort, and go into Spherize, if we didn't do that, you end up with a bit of a sort of elongated shape, and we want to keep it as a perfect sphere. We're simply going to use the default settings, which is 100%. You get a little bit of an idea of how it's going to look. Click OK, and you get an even better idea of how it's going to look. Perfect. Just what we're after. Can we to select, deselect, command D or control D will deselect for you. Right, now that we've done that, let's take it a stage further again. I want to give this a really glassy look. And we can do it quite simply by dropping down to the effects icon, clicking on the effects icon, layer styles in other version of Photoshop as well. Coming in, you can use any one of the glass buttons. So navigate your way to styles, then from styles, come in, take a look at, uh, there it is there, glass buttons, clicking on this, and if we drop down, this is the one we're after. This is the translucent glass double click in. Doesn't that look impressive? Just like a glass sphere, which is just what we were after. Right, now that we've created that, let's come back to our layers. And when we look at layers, you'll notice this little FX, exactly the same down here, showing us that a layer style has been applied to this layer. Now, if I double click on it, we come back with the settings that have been put in. We can come up to the light angle. We can click on the little slider here. We can move it around so we can change the light angle around, but I think it looked pretty good where it was. So let's go back. We got 130 degrees there. Great stuff. We're using the glow, and you can see the way the glow works with this. That looks, yeah, I like the way that's working. We've got the bevel. You can switch that on and off, and you can see it's the bevel which is giving it that sort of glazed look and that sort of sheen at the top. You can also click on drop shadow. That opens the drop shadow. You may have seen it just there, popping around the outside. Moving your cursor out, you can't do anything with this. So just click OK. Come back to the layer. Click back on that little FX, FX icon. Right, let's get it right. Move your cursor out. You've now got a move tool. Now you can move it round, and there's your drop shadow. So let's move it into this sort of position here, a little bit close to the edge. Not going to worry too much about that and just dragging it down. We need to sort of balance it. The light direction is here, so we're going to bring it out on the side there. And if we come to the size, the size is just going to soften it off. The opacity is, of course, the opacity. We're just going to take that back a bit, and we're going to click OK. Right, story so far. Let's switch on our background layer. We're going to take a look at just creating a very quick sort of background for this. So let's come to our background layer. Let's use Command J, Control J, to duplicate the layer. If we come to uh, Image, if we go to Transform, we can go to Free Transform, which is Command T, Control T. You'll notice you've got Skew, Distort, and Perspective. Using Command T or Control T brings up the Transform tool. If you right-click, you've now got a far bigger menu, and you've got Scale, you've got uh, Free Rotate, etc. Perspective is the one we're after, and if I click on the top like this, if you bring it in, you'll notice the two top corners come in exactly the same. If we come to the bottom, you'll notice the two bottom corners are coming out identically. So we can pull it into this area here. Bring your cursor back inside. Go to Free Transform. Clicking on this, we can drop this down. I need to come to something about midway point, something like that. Looks pretty good. Right click in. We're going to go back to perspective. Let's just bring this in like that. You'll notice the way they're coming in there. Great stuff. And just perhaps a touch or two lower there would look pretty good. Right, double click into apply. Just to give it a little bit of depth, I'm simply going to come into this and we're going to go to filter, we're going to go to blur, we're going to go to Gaussian blur, and we're just going to blur the background off by just a small amount there, just to give it a little bit of depth and click OK to that. Coming to our glass sphere, now with our glass sphere, I'm going to use Command T, Control T, which if you remember was the shortcut for the free transform. Coming up to the top, I'm simply going to hold down the Shift key. Now, the Shift key just main, you know, just make sure that you maintain all the correct proportions. Lifting our glass sphere up like this, and there it is, placing it into position. Job done. There's our photographic glass sphere. Just pressing Tab on the keyboard to remove all the tools. Let's pop it onto a black background. Looks pretty good, doesn't it?
go on, give it a try. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.